What is up you guys? Welcome back to the channel. It's Shady here and welcome back to another episode of Throwback Thursday in which I talk about and discuss my thoughts and feelings with regards to movies or TV shows that are at least two or three years old at the time that I'm making the video about them. So today we're going to be diving into the world of Twilight. I'm going to be focusing primarily on the first movie but we are going to be talking about you know little things here and there from the other films because as you know it was a series of films over a number of years and I feel like teenage girls including myself at the time of its release you know we definitely had a very intense connection with these movies and films now I don't think I was that into it to be like team Jacob team Edward that type of thing but yeah I definitely did like the movies at the time obviously now I kind of look back at them with you know a little bit of like Ugh, but yeah I want to talk about why it worked at the time and why it was probably so successful so so first, let's start off with the books because obviously that was the main source for these films. Stephanie Meyer wrote this series of books about this vampire, Edward, and also you have Bella who's just like intrigued by everything that Edward does along with his family, the Cullens. Now Stephanie did try to write, I think another book, it didn't really hit the same. And also I think it's because the era had kind of passed, you know, like the time had gone. So she is very fascinated and enamored by Edward and his withdrawnness at first, but at least in the Twilight film, okay? So we're gonna focus on Twilight, all right? That very first film and why it was kind of like the breakout sensation. So let's talk about the characters real quick. So I did introduce Bella and Edward. So Bella is being played by Christian Stewart and Edward is being played by Robert Pattinson. Now they do eventually form in real life an actual relationship but you know that didn't really end well. But regardless for the time you know it definitely sold that whole notion of them being this really deeply in love couple. So those were the two main characters and then you had of course Taylor Lautner who played Jacob and then we have the the Cullens okay we find out they all have these superpowers apparently when it comes to vampires they all have these like innate powers that they can use to their advantage and with Edward he could read minds. Ashley Green played Alice who could see into the future. Nikki Reed played Rosalie. Kellen or Kalan Lutz played Emmett and then of course Jackson Rathbone who played Jasper. Peter Fascinelli who played Carlisle and then Elizabeth Reeser who played Esme. Now that we have those interesting Introductions down. Let's talk about Bella real fast. Okay, I did bring her up as being like this person who's just enamored by anything and everything that Edward which to be honest, it does give off that vibe the entire series, okay? <laughs> Edward can do no wrong. He's just amazing to her, right? With Bella, I think the movie or at least the people who wrote the film, they really pushed this notion of like this not like the other girls trope. Like she wasn't really into girly things. Her friends even tried to drag her to buy a prom dress and she couldn't be any less interested when they drag her to go shopping for dresses. She just would like to go to this occult store to buy a book about vampires to learn more about Edward because she was so obsessed with this man. She realized that he was just like not like the other guys and she wanted a piece of him. She wanted to figure out what was making this man tick, why he was so mysterious. But at the same time we find out after he magically saves her from these guys who were trying to harass her in this dark alley, which number one, girl, why are you walking home late at night? Like why didn't you just go with your friends? You know, what what what's happening? So she's walking down this alley, the guys come in and out of nowhere Edward comes in in his Volvo. <laughs> <laughs> you remember when they used to have those commercials with the Volvo and like Twilight mixed together? That was interesting. But either way, he came speeding in and he saves Bella. She's just like making these connections. Like, how did you know I was there? Like, you know, he kept trying to make these excuses. So she was already making these connections in her head at the time that he was a vampire. He finally tells her when he takes her to dinner after that whole situation that he could read minds, but he can't seem to read hers, making her feel kind of special. But at the same time, she's just like, well, is there something wrong with me? And then Edward's just like, well, you know, I tell you that I could read minds and your first response is there's something wrong with you. Like that's hilarious. It does go back into this 
is not like the other girls trope where she's kind of like this special person. He could read everybody's minds except for hers because she's just like this like mysterious person as well. I guess it's supposed to again build intrigue for the reader and also for the watcher when it comes to the film. And I think at the time that this film was coming out the not like the other girls trope really worked well okay and I think it worked very well for us teenagers within the 2010s era because we I think also wanted to seem very unique. We wanted to seem like we weren't like these girly girls that were being presented in the early 2000s you know with the flip phones and you know the colorful lip glosses and all that stuff. I think there was like a growing group of girls who just wanted to be disassociated from all of that. So I think that's kind of why everyone was just kind of jumping on the Bella character as like oh I relate to her and I think that relatability as that character even though you look back on it now it's just like oh this she was kind of cringy. I think the way that Kristen Stewart plays her characters in general are kind of they're kind of cringy but I think at the time it really worked because that's what I think a lot of girls were into that level of mysteriousness and you know I'm not like these other chicas you know like I'm different <laughs> even though you're pretty much the same right there's a lot of us <laughs> Obviously you don't have to like the stereotypical girly girl things but at the same time it felt as though in some ways that they were kind of looking down on that in a way and looking at I think it was one of Bella's friends well not really friends but one of the people that she associated with when she would go to school Jessica. Jessica is kind of like your typical average like girly girl likes to dress up and really is interested in like boys and all that stuff but for some reason they tried to make her out to be like this desperate girl who wanted the attention of some guy and it's like she just wasn't this unique person because she wasn't like Bella you know so that's just kind of the vibe that I got. You try super hard to be or fit into this not like the other girls thing but that's kind of one of the main things that I noticed looking back on this movie. I watched it just a couple of weeks ago to make sure that I could you know talk about it in depth on this video or at least to an extent I guess maybe not in depth because I've seen a lot of people make these videos really really long and they really go into every single detail. We're not doing that in this video. To an extent we're gonna go into a little bit of depth right but that was one thing and then there was the whole like vampires versus werewolves. Now that I feel has always kind of been something that works works within film. People are just interested in the whole fairy tale world of these like magical creatures, these vampires who could just live off of human blood in caves and you have the the werewolves, people who could just turn into wolves at the sight of the full moon. So I think it brings obviously that whole magical fairy tale like aspect to it that already is an interesting topic for people and make it a little bit more teenagery. you know, they, they make it a little bit more intense with the love stories and love triangles but it's something that I think has always worked within films because people are just like ooh this is interesting you know like already off rip so for them to use that as something to build up off of I think it also helped as well for people to be like oh this seems interesting you know. Now I think another major reason as to why specifically teenage girls were very interested in this whole series of films is because of the intensity okay I talked about the character Characters. I talked about their love story. There is a love triangle that kind of spans over the period of films between Bella, Edward, and Jacob. Now Jacob I feel is kind of like the third wheel. Bella in New Moon at least had tried to kind of start something with him but as soon as she heard that Edward was in trouble she dropped Jacob like a hot cake. She's just like yeah I'm not really actually interested in you. It was more so like you're my boy toy for the time. Either way that was like their love triangle but in terms of the overall intensity mainly between our two characters Ella and Edward. I think obviously it does give off a certain level of cringe now but when I watched it as a teenage girl I'm not gonna lie these little things that Edward would say like these little one-liners even listening to them now just oh it, it well that <laughs> like it does make me kind of gag a little bit but I think when I watched it and also read it in the books these little lines that Edward would say to Bella to make her feel like this special person it just oh you know at the time I was like oh my god they're so in love like he loves her so deeply. <laughs> 
<laughs> Sorry, I can't, I can't even say it without laughing, but that is literally how my brain was wired at the time. Like, that's what I was thinking. Those were my thoughts. Like, this is such an intense relationship and they just can't be apart from each other. It was basically kind of like me in my teenage brain thinking that, oh, this intensity is what real relationships look like. You know, like when someone really, really loves you. So there were things that Edward would say, like this one particular line, okay? He basically says, I don't think I have the strength to stay away from you anymore. And he said it with like so much like intensity when he delivered the line. When I say it out of my mouth, it just, it really... <laughs> But either way, he says that and she's just like, basically, I'm your girlfriend now, okay? You didn't ask, but I'm your girlfriend now. <laughs> But as a teenager looking at that, you're just like, oh my God, it's so unrealistic, you know? But at the time you're thinking like, wow, this is so beautiful. It was that line. And then also where he says, you know, I like watching you sleep. I like watching you sleep. It's, um, it's kind of fascinating to me. I was like, um, you like watching her sleep? How are you getting into her room, sir? You know, like it was like, okay. So it was very strange and odd thing to say, but at the time you're in the audience, you're just thinking, oh my gosh, this is such a beautiful relationship. He really loves her. He really cares about her. He wants to protect her. He's there all the time. Like, so you pretty much just kind of ignore all the red flags of, oh, he could actually be a creep, you know? Like, whoa, are you stalking me, sir? But at the time you're just like, ooh, he really likes me. Yeah, that's what that means. Mm -hmm. I think it was mainly the intensity. And then also there was that one line where I think it was Bella. Yeah, Bella in the beginning, her voice comes in and she's just like something to the effect of, I never really gave any thought as to how I would die. And it kind of serves as a foreshadowing, obviously to the end when she gets bitten by, oh geez, who was, what was the name of that guy? James was the one that was stalking her. James and Victoria. Yeah, they were stalking her, but eventually they kill James. But either way, back on track here. James had bitten her and she was about to die until Edward had tried to like suck out, I guess the venom or whatnot to save her and have her not be a vampire because she was gonna eventually change, but he didn't want that. So yeah, I think it was supposed to be like a foreshadowing to that event close to the end. But either way, either way, it was like, why is this the first line? Why is this at the beginning of the movie? Why are we talking about death? Just gives this overall sense of dread. It's supposed to make you as the viewer think about like, why is she talking about death? Death, you know, in a sense. But at the same time, it's like, why are we talking about something so intense as a teenager? Or at least she's supposed to be a teenager. I don't think at the time of filming, she was a teenager, but you know, obviously the characters are supposed to be teenagers. I just think it was really just the overall intensity. And then also with teenagers, we have this unrealistic way of looking at romance. I think because of our hormones and everything, we just had this unrealistic sense of looking at relationship and also this like hot and heavy, relationship or connection with another person. I think this film definitely kind of played into all of that and it hit on all the right notes. So I think that's kind of why people were so interested in this tension or anything that was building up between Edward and Bella, even though it was such an awkward relationship. It's like people just kind of paid no mind to the awkwardness and creepiness and strangeness of the relationship and was just mainly focused on the fact that, oh my God, he's a fat Fire, and he's like restraining himself because he loves her so much even though he could kill her <laughs> But y'all let me know your thoughts on this one down in the comments. If y'all want me to talk about the other films like New Moon, Eclipse, Breaking Dawn, I could go into more details about those as well. But in this video, I mainly focused on Twilight because that was kind of like what started everything. Let me know in the comments if y'all want me to talk about all the others in another video. But I'll catch you guys in the next one. Peace.